Welcome back. Now, the Independent Petroleum Producers Group, IPPG, has uh, warned against being forced to sell crude oil to the Dangote refinery and other local refineries advocating for a willing buyer, willing seller framework in line with the Petroleum Industry Act 2021. IPPG suggests that the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC, use aids allocated 450,000 barrels per day to address the crude oil shortage affecting local refineries, ensuring that domestic refining needs are met. The group raised concerns about recent crude oil allocation methods, arguing that allocations should be based on actual local consumption rather than the demands of refiners to avoid inefficiencies and economic disadvantages. Dangote Group has accused international oil companies, IOCs, of prioritizing foreign markets and frustrating the local crude supply, despite government's directive to sell crude in Naira to local refineries starting in October 2024. We have joining us Comrade Mark Adebayo, the national spokesperson of the Coalition of United Political Parties. Good morning and welcome to the program, Comrade. Good morning, Yambu. Thanks so much for having me. Good morning, viewer. Yeah. Okay, we've seen this. Uh, the directive was given, matching orders as it were, uh, were given that uh, crude oil be sold in Naira to the refineries, the local refineries. And uh, now the, the marketers are saying, they're using the word force, that they're being forced to sell and they are not comfortable with that. We see a problem coming. Uh, what do you see? Well, um, thank you so much. You see, look, uh, it's a straightforward uh, matter because the local refineries should be a priority to any oil producer in this country. The local refineries, because this is our product, this is from our soil. It, the local refineries are supposed to be the priority of any oil producer. And I will urge the federal government to withdraw the license of any local oil producer that refuses or rejects the directive to sell to local refineries at the uh, percentage it has uh, indicated. So now, and as I was saying, local refineries should be the priority of any lo local oil producer because this uh, this is a product from our soil, from our country. They belong to us. So the, uh, the local refineries, you know, what these people are trying to do? All these uh, sharp practices, these uh, sharks, uh, uh, all these uh, big business, big oil business. Who don't want peace for this country? Who don't want progress for this country? That is what they are doing. They are, they are only after their own profit. And probably they have seen that uh, it pays them more to sell to outsider than selling to uh, local refineries. That's why they have been frustrating all the efforts to have our refinery working functioning all this while. So you can see that uh, uh, the federal government should treat any oil producer that refuses to sell to our local refineries as economic saboteurs. Can my, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. My so problem, any, my problem is that refinery, the problem is that any local refinery. We have a petroleum industry bill that was passed into law, and in this bill or in this law, it was uh, stated that there has to be a willing buyer and a willing seller. So if the seller is not willing. No matter how much the the buyer is willing, he's not bound by law to sell to the buyer. And this thing was not was not looked at before the directives were given. So if the seller says that I'm not going to sell, how would you blame him? Because, like you said, they are making more money selling uh, in dollars. Uh, oh, well, well, like I said, they should be treated like uh, like uh, economic saboteurs. Because if you say you are not willing, because yeah, the law is there. The, the law is there about a willing buyer, willing seller. We have willing sellers and we are willing buyers, rather. We are willing buyers and the willing buyers are to the interest of Nigerian Nigerians. And any law, any situation, any business interest that runs contrary to the national uh, uh, interest of Nigeria, you know, remains inconsistent to the level of its inconsistency with the well-being and welfare of Nigeria and Nigerians. And that one is secondary. The, the profitability of the sale is secondary. The most important, the primary thing, the fundamental thing, is the welfare and the, well, the economic and social well-being of Nigerians and Nigeria. So whoever now says, because uh, if you say you have a willing buyer, and then you say we, don't, we have an unwilling seller, 
pack your things and leave our country and go. That's what the, that's what the government should simply sit at. If you, if you, because if you want to, if your own business operations is to increase our suffering and our pain in this country, then you don't belong in this country. You, don't, you cannot do business with our oil. You, you should go. The government should withdraw the licenses of every unwilling seller. The, the, same, the same law gives the federal government the authority to give and take licenses. So let the federal government, because this is about policy. Yes, this is about policy. It's about the only policy that we are seeing that this government is trying to do something that uh, we can consider to be commonsensical, to be sensible, to be, to be, you know, to the benefit of Nigerians. And if anybody, if a conglomerate of very, very selfish uh, business people are now saying that they don't want to sell to our local refineries, they want us to remain in the circle of certainty of uh, taking our crude outside and going to buy free products bring to Nigeria at higher cost. It is about their profit, but it is about our own country. It is about our welfare. It is about our well-being. In this Abuja now, I bought, uh, yesterday, I actually bought 12 for 900 Naira. If we see somebody who will be selling to us at 500, that should be to our national interest. And the federal government must be able to protect our local refineries to prevent them from going to extinction, know, like the to national refineries are actually going to extinction. That, you see, whatsoever might be the business interest, whatsoever the losses will become secondary to the interest and progress and development of Nigeria and the economic and social well-being of Nigerians. And any other thing is subsumed under that. So it's not about the uh, losses that must be a willing buyer. A willing, I don't know who put that one there, but since there is a willing buyer, there must be a willing seller. If you are unable to sell, if you are unwilling to sell to the willing buyer, then the federal government should willfully, willfully withdraw your license and send you packing from this country. That, 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 just as simple as that. There must be people out there, there must be companies, oil companies out there who are willing to win, uh, to win those uh, oil, oil slots yeah. and then to produce and then send to local refineries. It cannot be all of them. They cannot come. You see, it does a gang up against Nigeria. But, that, but, if but how? That's a gang up against yes. Nigeria by these organizations, so, so called oil producers. They, I, they are, I agree. They are, um, I agree that. I agree that it doesn't sound patriotic or it doesn't sound like uh, someone who wants Nigeria to, to, to grow. But while they're sacrificing for Nigeria and Nigerians, what will be the incentive from government to them? Because they're businessmen. And they want to make profit. So, what should the government incentivize? What is the word I'm going to use to make them know that they also have their interest at heart? It should be. Uh, a see, there, there are many things. That, yes. There are, there, there are many things that the government can do to help them. Like, for instance, the the equipment they are using, they can give them a what do you call it tax break. They can give them all these import duties and the rest of that. They can. There are areas to cushion. Uh, that if once you are selling in Lyra, these are these these are these uh, are going to be the advantages and the benefits and the privileges are going to have. You can, you know, they, they, they use heavy machinery, heavy equipment to do what they are doing. You can give them a kind of a, a tax rebate or you know import duty, you know cut it maybe by fifty percent to, to the level that they will be comfortable, you know, operating. You can give some, you can you can give them some kind of a, a tax regime that is more comfortable to them. These are the things that the federal government can do. But since that instruction has been given, that sell to local refineries in Naira, nothing must reverse that. Because that is the, the best interest of Nigeria. And in all of this, yes, they have their business interest, but we have the national interest to protect. And the national interest supersedes the personal business interest of any individual or a group. So for them to gang up and say, no, 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 no. But how do they have, how, how do, 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 does anyone expect our refineries to, local refineries to function if we say we have a willing seller? Or will sell off our product? No, you get out of the country. This is a question of policy, and it's about our survival, our collective survival, our collective survival as a people, our collective survival as a country, and the government that has vowed, you know, under oath to protect the natural, the national interest of Nigeria, must go ahead and do everything within the law to protect the national interest of Nigeria. It is about our collective security. As a matter of fact. This matter is about our sovereignty. And when it comes to the issue of sovereignty, uh, 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 nothing, not, nothing else supersedes that. It's about our sovereignty. So if only it is only the enemies of Nigerians who can say that they, they, they want our, our local refineries to, to die, 
Because that's what they are saying. They are pronouncing death sentences on our local parents by saying that we will not, we will not feed you with our oil, we will not give you. Somebody is coming, he's not saying sell to me uh, on credit. He's, he's not buying uh, to, to pay tomorrow. He's saying, look, I have money. I want to pay. I want to buy. He's saying you are an unwilling seller. Says who? Not in our country. Certainly not in this space. Look, people are suffering. People are hungry. People are unemployed. People are seriously angry. So any, nobody should increase the anger. Nobody increase, should, should increase the problem in the land. And if they refuse, they say they reject, reject what? The government should take away their licenses, give it to people who are we, we need willing sellers now. Take, a, take, take their licenses away and give to willing sellers. Because it's about us. You see, the day the prices of uh, oil, of fuel crashes to like 500, 400 naira per liter, you see, prices of food will crash, prices of building materials will crash, inflation will crash, you know. I mean, there will be some relief for us in this country because everything. All economic indica indicators and indices are tied to the prices of fuel and fuel products. So the, the, that, that, that's where we, we are. This is where we are. It is not about, uh, you cannot be doing selective economic policies over products and, what, and services. Anything that affects fuel affects every, every, every other thing. That is where we are. That is why when but, but to be fair, doing, to be fair to the, 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 uh, the marketers, uh, don't you think uh, the president, while giving the directive, should have also given these incentives that you just mentioned? But he didn't say that. It sounded impunitive. Uh, so he just said, you must do this without telling me what I'm going to gain out of it. And it, it's, as, it's as if he didn't do findings to see how it will affect these businesses and all that. Uh, because a lot of pronouncements have been made by this president administration, and then we we'll find out later on that he didn't even have information enough. For instance, uh, when the directive was given that all the silos should be opened and then uh, rice served to Nigerians and all that, uh, we heard that they found out that there was no single grain of rice inside any silo that he was talking about. So it's as if you, they're just putting the cart before the horse all the time. Yes, I, I agree with you that somebody who says I'm not selling may be sabotaging the economy or may be talking from a selfish point of view. But don't you think also that the, the federal government should have, should have given these incentives as well to make sure that the people are comfortable? You don't kill their businesses because of Nigeria or Nigerians. Uh, yeah, you see, this government is notorious for acting before thinking. This government is notorious for that. They, they act on impulse. They, they don't uh, do their own work very well before they just make pronouncements. In fact, they are not. It's like they are. Like, that's why I said President Bola Ahmed, you know, who prepared strongly to win the presidency, to become president. He never prepared to govern. That is the, the consequence of what you are seeing. They don't have information about their own government. They don't have information about their economy. They don't have information about their own country. They don't have information about their own people. They don't. So they, they, they will just say something and then begin to think later. That is the problem that we have with this. But having said that, not, uh, uh, nevertheless, you know, the issue is this. It, these people are businessmen. They are business people. Now, and one of the hallmarks of business people is negotiation. Yeah, the government has made pronouncements. Go and negotiate. Don't, don't grandstand. Don't say we will not. You, you, you will reject. You will refuse. We, we... No, no, no. Who are you talking to? The government should stand up as a government and not allow this uh, conglomerate of, of uh, more or less like Kaba, or people like Kaba to say that, though, what the government has said, the government of the country, the government of the country has said, this is our policy, this is what you should do. You are saying you reject. Reject what? Because for the first time, you are seeing a government protecting the interests of Nigerians, the basic interests of Nigeria. So we have to support the government on this one. We have to support the government 100% on this one. We cannot, because of the selfish business interests of a few people, now must gauge the joy, the, the peace, and the progress of, of, of the whole of Nigeria. No, 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 we cannot. We cannot do that. Let them go and negotiate with the government and say, okay, uh, what, what, what's the need for us? Are they not business people? They are business people. Then they should go and negotiate. This thing you have said we should do. They cannot say we cannot do it. If they are not doing it, they, they will run, run them out of the country. There are thousands of, of Nigerians who are capable, who are competent to be all producers. And they will take over. They will take, even there are foreigners who will come in and take over the business and, and begin to sell to, to that. It's not just 40%. Then they will say they, they should limit it to what we need. Look, what they are trying to do is that they want to be you know, releasing the fuel to local refineries in a, you know, um, little by little in a very limited manner, so that there will, be, there will continue to be scarcity. And when there's scarcity, that is the national economic law. Then there will be increase in prices. 
But when the government says there was a percentage, so that let the fuel be everywhere, so that people can see to buy at cheaper rates, and then there can be some peace and quiet in this country. We don't have those. We don't have those. Don't have... So this is what, for the first time, we are seeing that the government is saying something and doing something that we believe uh, is to the best interest of Nigerians. Uh, the Almighty Nepal has uh, struck again. We can see so, you, so no problem. Really hope, uh, no, no problem. Uh, we can see you. Uh, but now we're, we're talking about we're talking about uh, um, the the oil marketers that have said that they are not willing sellers as it, as it were. What about the person who is the willing buyer? Uh, we're talking about the interest of Nigerians. These are two uh, two businessmen. One selling, one buying. One the one that is trying to buy will eventually sell to Nigerians. Uh, what should be uh, told to this person who is going to be selling to Nigeria. For instance, if Dangote is going to have it easy uh, because the federal government has made it, made it so, so that he can buy in Naira, what should he be doing knowing that Nigerians must not suffer because he has come on stream? Because I, I heard the other experts were saying that if he begins to sell fuel, he will be selling fuel at about 650 Naira. That doesn't make any difference for me because Fuel was like 200 naira or less before the, uh, the last, the, the administration before this one came on. And now this administration came and made a pronouncement. Fuel has gone to like 700 naira. Some, people, some places they are buying for 950 naira uh, from filling stations, not even black market. Yes. So you can imagine what it is. So what will Dangote or other refineries do for Nigerians if this is done for them? Well, one good turn deserves another. I would expect uh, if uh, if uh, we would not be buying fuel at like, like 500 naira or less, then it's uh, it's, uh, it's more or less uh, untenable because uh, well, what advantage is there now? Now there's not there's nothing there. Nothing has changed because I would expect that uh, we'll be buy, we'll be buying fuel at a much cheaper uh, rate, like 500 naira or or even lesser. That 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 that, 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 that should have been the target. That should have been the focus. And if you are buying in Naira, you should, I think they should be able to, to do that for us. If that is not going to happen, then I don't, I don't see any, I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. If, if that is the case, because what, what you, because you can see that in this matter in this crisis now, Nigerians, uh, are, are, you know, I find themselves queuing behind the uh, Dangote and saying, no, they, they are being just to him. They are being that. because we are, the expectation is that if it's refinery and other local refineries begin to produce, then we are going to buy uh, for a cheaper rate. Probably 500 or lower, but it's going to be remain 650 that it was. Really, President Tinubu removed the subsidy. Then nothing has changed. It is same of the same, and then which, which means that uh, the potential for it to increase to 700 naira, uh, 800 naira is, uh, is is possible. I bought fuel yesterday at 900 naira at a filling station mm. in Lagos. So the filling station. Is selling that some filling station who are selling at black market prices. It is as bad as that. And, then, and the regulatory agencies are looking at them. They don't even care. Nobody goes around to check to check on them because primarily the agency, the NNPCL, that is supposed to make these things available at cheaper rates, you know, is not doing its job. It's not doing. They are, they, are the, they are the only importer of uh, finished products of the but they, they, are, they are not they are not doing a good job of it. That the foil is is cut. They are. There are still queues all over. Going to the, uh, coming from the office now to come and quickly uh, <coughs> attend to this interview, see queues everywhere. Where you don't see queues are those places where they are selling at 900, 950 per liter. Where you don't see queues, where you see three, two cars or no cars at all. You're driving, and for some of us who cannot go and spend five hours, 10 hours doing for fuel, you, uh, you just have to, to go and buy at a, because uh, time, time is capital. It's a major capital. You cannot go. I, I cannot. I can't. I can't even my, my, allow my driver to go and stay on queue for five hours. Six hours. No, no, no. It's, it's inhuman. I mean, it's like uh, it's an abuse of. Uh, it's a very bad uh, situation. You ask family, you ask to go to. Then you say some some driver they sleep at the filling station just because they want to buy food. You know. I mean, that's what terrible. So for somebody like me, because of my work schedule, I cannot even be on queue for one hour. I cannot be on queue for thirty minutes. So I would rather go and buy. But how many people can afford that? That is the, that is the city. So if the local refineries are coming and we are still going to continue to buy at 650, then it's not worth the trouble. It's not worth the it's not worth the trouble at all. The, the only thing that we probably can be sure of 
is that probably uh, consistent uh, availability. But they themselves can also take hold of the ransom by making this cast for the prices to go up. So the regulatory agencies must be very, very up and doing to be able to see that uh, a, a government that lacks Nigerians, a, a government that loves itself, will not even allow anybody to sabotage uh, its uh, policies. But we have very docile people in government who, even to implement their own policies, uh, uh, be, becomes an issue for them, becomes a challenge for them. Uh, uh, it's, kind of, it's a challenge of leadership. Uh, because we are not seeing, um, we are not seeing uh, any responses. The body and focal language of this government is not consistent with the interest of Nigerians so, so far. So this one that they want to get right, they must get it right 100%. So, you know, I, I don't want any local refinery selling fuel to us at 659. I mean, it should be something around 500 or, or 450 or something uh, lesser than that. That is when we know that, uh, okay, the we have advantages over local. If they start at 650, I can bet you within two months that we still, <coughs> the prices will rise again. The prices will rise again. Okay, well, cover it. We cannot turn Nigeria into, into a mercantile object to be treated with. Are they selling Nigeria? I mean, I mean, this thing, and if you look at the, the way hey, other countries have been operating, or the, the developing countries, the advancing countries, countries that are, that, are, that are doing the right thing, you will see that this thing is not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Even countries that are not producing oil. So why, why are we so backward? Why are we so poor? Why are we, so, in terms of management of our resources, why are we this terrible? Why are we, what, what are our leaders doing? That, that is making it so. The other time I was asking, I was listening to your last guest, you, you are discussing about one former president trying to come back. The question is, go and look, what, what were his legacy was when he was president the, the first time? You know, all, all these things, it, 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 it is abusive to our common sensibilities, sincerely. We just need a new, a new set of uh, revolutionary think leadership in this country. Okay. Well, this is where we have to wrap it up, Comrade Adebayo. Thank you for your thoughts this morning. It's always a pleasure having you on the show.